right, what's up everybody? Jay LaValle, Joe Wrestling. I have Meyer Shapiro here at the Capital Wrestling Club here in Gaithersburg, Maryland. How you doing, Meyer? Doing good. Finished a good practice, you know, just helped out with some of the guys over there. Pretty awesome over there. You got NCAA champion Teague Morrow. Yeah, Teague. Been around Teague for a long time now, and Teague's always been the man. You know, he's always got good technique and good energy. I mean, Teague used to wrestle at the club all the time and used to beat the crap out of him, so <laughs> it's good to see him still in here. Teague's a great guy. I've, I've known Teague in 2003 when I first started getting back into wrestling in yeah. Boston, and he was at Harvard. Really? So My name is Teague Moore. I was born and raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I now live in Boston, Massachusetts. I met him. He was an assistant coach at Harvard because I was going to Harvard, trying to find opportunities to, to wrestle again. and. Got to meet him there, and then ironically, I moved down here, and he was down here. He's always been a, a good, reliable guy. You know, he's always he's uh, developed a good wrestler too, like uh, Keyshawn Clark. Who's had quite a ride, born in Germany, moved to Dallas. Good, big fan of oh, Keyshawn. Yeah. Um, I'm actually gonna get to train with him soon too. He's about to be uh, at the Cornell. Nice. Yeah, yeah, he's on the German national team. Yeah, German national team, and um, him, Lachlan McNeil, and some uh, Canada. Yeah, and Canada. some uh, French Russians. Oh, coming nice. up to Cornell, so when I get back home, it'll be some good training, too. Oh, that's nice. All, all good things. You know, when I come home, I got good training, and, you know, when I go back to uh, Ithaca, I got good training, so. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, definitely want to, like, hit on, you know, your experience at Cornell, because I'm sure that's absolutely un unbelievable. I definitely wanted to touch on your roots in Maryland. You, you came through Maryland, you know, the Warhawk system. You are yeah. with the Colette Club for a little bit, and then... Your ties was I guess you were maybe Cooperman and then John yeah. Morrison. Yeah. Your your influences, you know, how your experience was in Maryland and yeah, just uh, growing up. So I started wrestling when I was uh, like five, just turned six, and uh, my dad was talking about me in wrestling, and then so now we started going to uh, local high school, and my sisters went to high school, but uh, Warhawks Wrestling had a, a rec league there. Started wrestling there, and. Um, I was only there for about like half a year, and uh, Dan, the uh, notorious Dan Ricker, showed the guy and was picking guys to get to come to uh, the barn, which ended up being you know like the more high level uh, area wrestling for Warhawks and. And, to, and back up here, we'll stop here for a minute. The Warhawk Wrestling Club, Kyle Snyder. Yeah, Kyle Snyder, Jason, the Kreiser brothers, the Kreiser brothers, uh, Joey Thomas, uh, Daniel Planta. There's been a lot of a lot of good wrestlers and just just a lot of uh, just history of wrestling. I've got a lot of guys who've been to Fargo and just have competed at a high level and just having um, Kyle Snyder is like our big uh, our big name there and just seeing him do so well and going to Powerade tournaments that I didn't even know what they were when I was in middle school and I was just going like what what's the beast of these like right. but uh, yeah I grew up uh, going to Warhawks was at Warhawks you know a good amount of time and you know at some point you know the Warhawks room uh, you know it did a lot for me got me to where uh, a big part of my wrestling career was, you know. But towards the end, when I was one of the older guys in the room, it was hard to, hard to find partners. And, um, you know, John Morrison was in the area. He, uh, we started a, the, a club called Capital Wrestling Club, and that's where we are today. Uh, and that's where another big part of my wrestling in Maryland's been, is here uh, wrestling with, like, uh, DJ McGee and Monsieur Wilkinson, and, uh, you know, Gene Quadola was here, and, um, and Connor Strong, and just... Another another great atmosphere for me, and just gave me a lot of stuff to think about, and just big goals. You know, the guys, those guys are were a little bit older than me, and they were having success in wrestling, and I, I wanted to have more success. So it just made me more motivated to go to practice and just be around these guys. And you know, really, uh, you know, I'm very grateful to have uh, the wrestling uh, facilities that I did have growing up. You know, it's not as good as going to Pennsylvania, and that's a, another part of my my wrestling. Uh, story was in my eighth grade year I went to uh, Young Guns Wrestling a lot in my really home school and my dad and I grew up nice. there almost every every day probably three or four days a week to go to Young Guns wow. and wrestled with a lot of other really good names you know Rocco Welsh and that church the Gibson Brothers and just those guys and just all, all those little combined practices and going here and going there and just doing those little extra workouts I used to do private with Rob Eider who was an Olympian that Rob's 118 guy. Yeah. Rob was uh, another big part of just my wrestling and um you know all of it you know uh, John Morrison was a big part and you know a reason why how I met John was uh, from Corey Cooperman and just growing up and wrestling with him and his guys and being around this year at such a young age and having competitive spirit and just understanding that wrestling's hard at a young age 
really, you know, blew my mind. Because, you know, at first I kind of shied away from it and it was hard for me to really grasp it. But as it went on and the more I did, and I realized why it's hard and the reasons why people do it, and just it just became, you know, a, 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 a love story. You know, I just fell in love with it very easily. And just, you know, I set my eyes on something and um, I would say I've done a pretty good job of accomplishing some of those things. And I can give a lot of success to just all the roots of my wrestling from Maryland. Uh, from Warhawks to Capital Wrestling Club and you know, going going to Pennsylvania, just all those little those little practices, and taking those little extra times out of my day to go to practice was definitely beneficial. Well, nice looking yeah. belt on your shoulder, yeah, exactly. Cadet World Champion. Nice <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. How are you feeling? Yeah, I, feel awesome, like, I think I wrestled a great tournament, and to end up on top and to have this belt means so much. People that you mentioned in Maryland alone, Rob Eider, Olympian. Uh, 96, I think. Yeah, long time. Uh, Corey Cooperman, amazing NCAA wrestler, yeah. phenomenal like brain of wrestling. Yeah, awesome John technician. Morrison, amazing wrestler te technician. Yeah. And then just all these other places that you've been through. I mean, that's I, at the end, it's like, and you sound so grateful for it. I mean, I think that's so important to be like, just be grateful for having those opportunities. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we, not everybody has them, although we do. Which yeah. is crazy too, and but yeah. not everybody takes advantage of them. Yeah, so taking advantage is a big thing I, I like to think about because there's a lot of people you know who don't even know that they live in a wrestling state, or it's right. like right. you don't even know you live five minutes away from the best wrestling clubs in the country, like or this that you know being in like states like Pennsylvania or being so close, like Maryland's so close to Pennsylvania, we see states that state has so much success and right. our guys not. And it's like stuff to, to change, stuff like that, but just. Uh, just getting more people into the, into the sport of wrestling in Maryland, I think, is a big thing. You know, right. we have the, the resources to make good guys. So just we got to get more people doing it. That's true. Absolutely. So that maybe was my your first life. cadet year. I was fourteen. So you went to Fargo. I watched your matches, and yeah, you were you were close, close to placing. What yeah. happened between Fargo not placing, and I guess obviously we had COVID, so and COVID then twenty twenty one. Next thing you know, you're a U seventeen world champion. What happened in between there? So that's a, that's <laughs> a good little a good little point of time. So you know, John was freshly like coach there. And, um, you know, John did a lot for me in the, the aspect of uh, opening up my mind, you know. When, like, going to Fargo, you know, I watch my matches, and it's like, I'm doing a lot of the, the best things. I'm doing, I'm getting the legs well, I'm doing techniques right. But it's that last little, you know, that little it factor where it's like, how bad are you going to really try to get this? Or it's like, you can do everything 99% right, but if you don't do that last 1%, you're not going to get anything. And just getting mentally stronger and just, you know, overall just keep realizing that I'm in the right place and I'm doing the right things and not getting discouraged from results and understanding that you know that these guys it's 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 you can beat these guys and you're losing to them for the for the wrong reasons you're losing to them you're you're, you're self-sabotaging yourself you're bringing it onto yourself you're you're bringing all this imaginary pressure onto yourself and it's a lot of kids do do a lot of a lot of that stuff to themselves or you know parents can be a part of that and just overall just kids need to r realize that it's just, just the game, and it's just you got to go just out there and let game. it rip. And it's just yeah. another sport. It's just, it's what you do. It's why you. There's a reason why you go out and every you put so much, so much work in. It's because you love it, and you don't want to make the best part of the sport unlovable. And that's the competing part. And that was one thing that I realized, just like having confidence in myself and just understanding my self worth with, with wrestling and just as, as, a, as a person and just not feeling sorry for myself or this and that. Just any any point of conflict, just 
keep working through it and just making it even that victory work even more for me just for those little those little battles you win where it gets really hard and you're, you really want to quit and stuff it just makes that that end victory just so much sweeter and a big thing I would say that changed is really just my mindset you know just really just keep practicing and just keep wrestling and obviously the skills were there and just understanding that I need to have some sort of uh, not uh, discipline but just I'm gonna go out there and I'm not gonna let this guy disturb what I'm gonna do and just I'm gonna I'm gonna dictate what I do and you know not letting outside things affect me too letting my dad affect me or just family in general getting not under my skin but you know they, they talk to you at tournaments and they right. say stuff to you so letting that stuff just to you know process it just think about it and just um, you know Yanni always says a good thing just uh, be excited man just be just look around just look how awesome where you are just enjoy enjoy what you're doing and it's like wow like as soon as I enjoy what I'm doing it's like when I was out at, uh, in Vegas for the US Open I was, I was stressing out a little bit of course you know everyone does and it's like dude you're, you're in Vegas this is the first time I've ever been to Vegas and I just kept thinking about that and just dude, you're in a casino like there's all this great wrestling going on and it's like you, you get so much to do and you're wrestling well just your weight's fine like there's right. nothing you should be worried about you should be more you should be excited right. like, you should be grateful for everything that's going well for you right now and it's just like a, a, a thoughts like that that can change your mind in an instant that's really good perspective because it's easy to let those external factors start to kind of control the way you're thinking right and, but you're you're able to I think we call it sometimes we call it like let it slide right you yeah. just let whatever's coming in slide off and you move on and you you stay excited but that that's a that's awesome that you were kind of able to figure that part out and so you think that was like one of the biggest things that allowed you to kind of make that because I watched all your Fargo Bat and you were doing all the right things. You were getting in the right positions. But there was it, you were right. It was like at the very end, was it was it all the way to the very end? Right. Or was it not that you were giving up, but it was what's going on? Silly mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More of a not rational thinking. That's one thing I realized. It's just having a game plan. But, you know, one thing I used to never do was talk to myself when I would wrestle. Mm. And... I would always have like this blank mind when I wrestle, and I think that's good having a blank mind. But also, you know, having the blank mind and just having someone in the back of the head just going, you know, you're doing great, man. Just keep doing it. There's, uh, you're doing good. And there's also um, another good point that Zane Richard just made. Equip yourself and learning how to ignore, in a sense, right, and, or, or let those thoughts just be thoughts. It's like a passenger on a bus, right? If I'm driving a bus and I have a bus route and the crazy guy in the back who's a homeless dude is telling me to take a right whenever I can't take a right. Why does I don't take the right because the guy is crazy, right? I just say, hey, man, like, okay, I got it. And then you go on your normal bus route. It's the same thing in a wrestling match, right? Kids get scared or they get worried and they're like, oh, I got to take a shot because there's a lot of – no, you don't, right? That's that's that crazy guy on the bus telling you what to do. You don't have to listen to him. Is, uh, you know – if I'm if I'm driving a bus and someone behind the bus says take a right, when there's not a right I can make, I'm gonna patiently wait until there's a right I can make. You know, I'm not gonna just force the right. And that's where that kind of like when you're wrestling and there's that, that that person in the back of your head saying do this, do this, and it's like you know I'm gonna I'm gonna wait. You know, not that you're not taking an action, you're being uh, hesitant, but it's more of just being more cautious of what do, what you're about to do. You know, just being patient and not making silly mistakes and just overall keeping the mind not flustered and sticking to game plans and just simple stuff like that and it sounds like oh yeah just stick to your game plans like what are the guys doing this just stick to your game plan you know stay in position do the little things i think people forget about those little details just staying in position hand fighting and just you know i, I forget sometimes that I'm, I'm so hard to take down and it's like why am i wrestling stingy it's like dude just go out there and let it rip because you know uh, guys are gonna have a hard time scoring on you and stuff like that you know just little little things of confidence and just in matches just slowing yourself down to you know like when I'm in matches now it feels a little bit slower you know I'm so worried right. about getting tired people just get so worried about this and that and you know all worrying does is just make you think about stuff that's not even happening right. it just gets you stressed right. out about it And but as soon as you can just go out there and having a blank mind when you go out there but once you're out there just knowing just staying focused and understanding what, what the objective is going out there and scoring but Overall, just staying on task. You know, your mind can sort of start to wander in those matches and start to what if this, what if that happens? And you know, the more you think about it, the more it's going to happen. So, just worrying about what if I get the next takedown? What if 
I just right. pin him right here? You know, what if I just hold him down the rest of the match? Or right. what if I just have such good offense, I just tack him before the match even ends? You know, right. more doubting our doubt than believing our doubt. Right. Yeah, making good decisions when you're under stress. And that's why I like what you said. You kind of like slow things down so you can make those split second because that's it's not easy out there right right you're both people are going 100 percent trying to scrap and go hard but you gotta be able to slow it down enough so you can make the right decision at the right time and it seems like you've been doing that like amazingly u17 world champion in 2021 yeah. just made the U20 uh, world team that's going to Warsaw, right? Poland. Yeah, Warsaw, Poland. You must yeah. be excited about that. Yeah, I'm super excited like for that. And just You know, this whole year, uh, you know, I have people I talk to for my mindset and stuff. You know, one thing I really like to say is just taking one bite at a time. And you can take that as anything in an everyday aspect. Uh, I like to take it in my wrestling. You know, people get so caught up in so much stuff at once you know just taking a smaller bite and just you know you can't you can't bite off more you can chew so mm -hmm. taking a, a giant bite could be just worrying about too many tournaments at one time or worrying about making the finals of a tournament or just worrying about just even making it to the semis of a tournament and wrestling a kid you don't want to wrestle it's like he has to do the same thing right. and the only way you can do that is if you win that first match and just stuff like that you know this whole season you know i went to the u.s open and that was part one for me and Spyro is going to do it. He's going to get the win. He's going to advance to the finals of the U20 World Team Trials. He'll get a big stop sign for winning the U20 Open. You know, I went there, qualified for World Team Trials, ended up qualifying good enough to, to sit out for the finals. Part two, winning that World Team spot, you know. And there it is. Shapiro is pumped. He says, let's go. I think he was about to hit the map, but he realized that <laughs> Taylor was underneath them. He couldn't give a right. mat slap without hitting Taylor in the back. But a lot of emotion. Meyer Shapiro, look at that. He's going to be a man on a mission. He's a U17 world champ trying to make it U20. You know, just making, you know, even before that, I, I didn't feel completely prepared, but, you know, I, I had to believe I, that I was and just. I wasn't, my wrestling didn't diminish in that short time that I competed, right. so I went out there and just believed in myself and it ended up working. You know, that first match I had was a little slow and that was only because, you know, it didn't have all the jitters out, but you right. know, you can see see how I compete in that second match. And, you know, the next part for me is that is that part three and that's is getting that, uh, that junior world medal. And, um, you know, I have, I have a good amount of time until part three. You know, I'm excited for part three and like everything, just taking one bite at a time and just, Showing that while I can, processing that. And yeah. just, those little days, you know, I'm excited to go back to Ithaca and have good training partners. And excited, you know, Yanni's uh, unfortunately not going to be competing at the World Championships right. this year, but he is uh, fortunately going to get to go with me to the Junior World Championships oh, and coach me. So excited for stuff like that. And just overall, just excited to, for the future of my wrestling and Porno wrestling and just you know, everything that's ahead of me. It's just all good stuff, you know. Couldn't, couldn't. Yeah, so you went from Maryland, being in this environment in Maryland to make the U17 world team, win the championship. Now you're in at Cornell University. Yeah. You, ju you homeschooled, or, or yeah, you homeschooled, finished your senior year up there. Yeah, homeschooled, took off my senior year, and just, uh, it's amazing. I, I did a couple opens this year, you know, had some success in the, the first couple college years, and then um, first couple college matches, and, you know, excited to, to continue that next year, but, you know, like everything I just said, one bite at a time, yeah, we'll get yeah. through, uh, Junior Worlds, we'll take care of that and take whatever momentum I have from that right into that college season and uh, we'll have a fun college season, you know, I'm excited to be in the NCAAs and yeah. wrestle D1 matches and wrestle in my, my, my home room, my stadium and just, I have a team to represent, you know, that's a big thing that I, I've had a, not a, uh, a hard time doing, but you know, I, I've been bouncing around a lot of my wrestling career and yeah. it's finally, uh, it's finally time to have a, a team that can just really represent. stability. Yeah, yeah just yeah, some yeah. stability and just having a, uh, people I can depend on every day and just people I can come to and I, I know that they'll always be there and people that won't leave my side and just little things like that and you know people take that for granted you know uh, having people in your life and having important like there's, there's there's coaches you know just uh 
you couldn't imagine just one day you're a wrestling coach not being your wrestling coach anymore. It's like, where are you going to go to practice? And finding new practices, finding someone to be in your corner, finding someone to talk about mental stress and just little things like that. You know, people people take stuff like that for granted and just, you know, uh, like uh, I, I, people say this a lot in wrestling, always grateful for the opportunity and being grateful for the opportunity to practice and to have lifts and just to have moments like this where people are supporting you and just all those little things, you know, people take that for granted. So stuff to remember, you know. Yeah, no, I, I, it's so important every day to just – remind yourself how grateful you are just to be number one just being alive and breathing but you know having yeah. this up not everybody has this in fact I'm thinking to myself in there while well, you're kind of you're teaching Teague's over there kind of orchestrating things yeah and all these kids are in there they probably have they have some idea but they not they some of them probably have zero idea who you are what you've done that's why I think this is so important so we can share it and hopefully the, the kids understand, the parents understand, like, what the type of opportunity they have right now. Yeah. You know, we talked about this before, and I, I, I've kind of, as I've got older, have kind of leaned towards this end, but you seem to be more of trying to get stronger in a restorative way, in a holistic way, and, and I think, you know, Chase Lawrence, he runs Chase Performance here. Yeah. He's kind of the same mindset, right? So I've been working with Chase for, for quite some time now, I think maybe like four or five years now. And at his old gym, but now you know he works here at the Idaho Wrestling Club, and that's another thing that's that's just awesome. But Chase does, uh, you know, some some different stuff than you see other lifter after uh, other lifting uh, places do. You know, he's working about you know mobility, being functional, how to how to really use your strength in the right way, and just thinking about little uh, just little graphics in your head to almost help you expel your strength in a better way. You know. Uh, I've never been the strongest, you know, I've always had a hard time with my strength, and that's one thing people always say, is like, Mario, you're, 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 you're so strong, you, you feel so strong, and it's like, you know, I, I can't bench press more than probably 200 pounds, so, you know, to some people I'm strong, some people I'm not, but Chase is uh, someone that kind of gives me, I feel like, that secret strength, where it's just like those little muscles, and, you know, you can't, you can't lift, uh, you can't lift any weight if you're hurt, you know, and, and just feeling good all the time, and just taking care of my body, you know, you only, another, a good, uh, saying my dad always says you only have to be strong enough you know the guys who can squat a thousand pounds push a thousand pounds that's great you know but if I can take you down with only being able to push 250 pounds right. you know that's a I've been spending a lot more time wrestling than you know I'm doing I'm, do, I'm spending that time elsewhere and just you know in general just thinking outside of the box you know my dad's giving me a lot of a lot of resources giving me different supplements and just stuff that you know not a lot of other kids would be doing or you know everyone's taking their multivitamin Who's taken their uh, their branch amino acid fish oil pill, oh, just nice, stuff like that, nice. just crazy stuff like that, or taking certain brands of supplements because they make certain right. quality of stuff, and just you know, guys. You're pretty healthy. I mean, I, like, I see your Instagrams. You, you're into poke bowls. Yeah, poke that's bowls. big for you, right? Yeah, people, <laughs> yeah. There's a um, sushi. Yeah, sushi. All that raw fish is super yummy. Yeah. Up in Ithaca, we have this uh, poke place called uh, Poke Lava, and nice. it's like the spot, you know probably takes you five minutes in and out to get out of there so it's quick and easy nice. it's sushi bowl it's super yummy good calories oh and just, yeah it helps so healthy yeah just good you know just all that stuff you know just eating clean you know I, I can definitely do a better as I'm getting older I'm trying to do a better job of all that stuff you know I'm still a kid sometimes you know right, it's, right. it's hard to be perfect with uh with all that stuff you know I, I plan my goal is to you know be a more uh, disciplined athlete when I get older and I'm still working on it. That sounds crazy, you know, to like more, being more disciplined, but just little stuff like that. Just it's little stuff. things. That just, stuff yeah, goes a long there. way, especially if you're repeating those things yeah. every day, right? And, you know, I have big goals to be a really high level athlete, and the only way to do that is being, you know, the best athlete that I can be. And just like little things like that, you know, just yeah. making sure I'm on my phone a little bit less and just yeah. get my workouts done sooner, eating a little bit cleaner, yeah. going to bed a little bit sooner, just all those little things, you know. You, I, I try to do that, you know. I try to do a good job of that. And like, any, like anything, you can do a better job. Yeah. Just
come up with the stability ball? So, is it? Is that like? That's kind of your thing, right? Yeah, you know, I really hope no one um, trademarks it or someone steals it. You know, I see Bo Bassett doing it in a lot of them. You gotta get like a branding on a stability well, ball. Well, I hate, you know, I don't like to be, you know, I don't like to brag too much, but I can definitely say I'm the best at the ball. Yeah, um, you, you might no win one, a world championship. I, think, well, I, I would definitely say I'm the best at the ball. So whoever wants to try, you know, you can keep trying. If, you can, if you're better than me, you can take the ball rights. But <laughs> I've been doing that for a long time. I've been doing that. Been, basically, I, I, I've been first wrestling. You know, I used to do a lot of stance and motion in my basement. And um, I remember playing on the ball and kind of just like doing the hip high drill. Mm. Like, coach used to do you have to wait shallow so you do that. Yep, and you just, yep. like, work your feet down and then boom, hip high. And I would do that and then I would add a little extra trick to it. My dad said, oh, I was pretty good, Meyer. Like, try to do that for, try to wrestle the ball for a minute on, see how that works. And like, I was like, dude, that got me really tired. And he's like, well, that's good. I'm trying to do it again. And then I started treating it like a uh, like a stance of motion workout, like one minute off, 30 yeah. seconds off. And then, um, you know, it just kind of took off from there. Uh, I realized no one else really did that. Uh, you know, I see some jiu-jitsu guys every once in a while. Well, they can balance on it. But, uh, you know, it's just something I've been doing for a long time. And I do personally think it helps my wrestling a lot. It helps with uh, just body awareness and being able to flip my hips and just little right. being able to... Uh, I've always thought I've had pretty good shot defense and to be able to get my hips back and to sprawl on people and just to overall just have a flow for, for wrestling. You know, wrestling right. is a very is a very weird uh, there's no exact movement for wrestling here. You right. pick you pick what you like, you pick what you do and you, you figure the fastest way to get to those moves. So I think rest, or the, the ball stuff does a good job of uh, giving you a unique feel and a unique uh, perception of moving and just something different other than just, you know, stance in motion because that's right. the exact feel you're gonna feel in wrestling. Giving you something where you're, it's almost like you're scrambling, but you're also not in control of your body and you have to find control of your body and learn the balance of the ball and just right. very Well, you're uh, dealing with an external factor, just yeah. like an opponent, right? You right. gotta deal with somebody that's not, it's not that you, you're not, you don't have a whole lot of effort and control over sometimes. It's a good point, just, uh, yeah, you know, someone being uh, unpredictable, yeah. and the ball can be unpredictable sometimes, or it throws you off, or you bounce higher, and, the same time that a partner can be predictable, if you push in, he's gonna push back. So yeah. kind of the ball, you know, if you yeah. push really hard on the ball, it's gonna it's gonna throw you back up into the air. So the ball's uh, just another resource, just something I, I have, you know, uh, you know, just like a, like a like a guy like Chase, just unorthodox things where I think they, they they seem to help me, and just little things like that, you know, being out thinking outside of the box, you know, people who think right. outside of the box. Uh, tend to do well my dad's always done a good job of that thinking of new ways of training and just you know i see people do this and i don't really like how that works out so let's let's find something yeah. so, there's one little funny story we're talking about like, per, like perception and stuff so i used to go to uh these uh camps in uh, pa uh, brian morrow camps oh, yeah, they're yeah. they're the back of um they're back of, like this antique store you walk you drive around and you, you know in the back you come the party jam and it was like this raggedy wrestling room pieces of like, mats everywhere. Little pieces of mats here, like little cuts of mats, just like all put in the room, very shaggly room, but uh, I used to go to their awesome practices. I remember seeing like guys like Jojo Aragona being in there, Austin DeSanto was sitting next to Austin, me back yeah. in the day, and just very high level wrestlers. And I remember Brian Morrow brought this kid in. He's like, yo, hey, this is uh, Spencer. So Spencer was a uh, cadet world champion, and uh, our two-time cadet world champion, and maybe a junior world champion. I'm sitting there and I'm like, world champion? What? I'm like, How old I, were you? I was probably like nine or ten. Uh, and, you know, so it didn't like, sink in yet. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking meant. world yeah. champion. Like, this kid looks like he's ten years old. Like, this kid, <laughs> this kid's only a couple years older than yeah, me. And, yeah. and my dad even wearing the car. He's like, what, is, what does that mean? Cadet world champion, junior world champion. And you know, it just sounds like you know, there's all these other sports you can be a world champion and these other Pan American champion and all this stuff. And it's like. You have no idea the, the perception and just the, the levels it is to get it, to get into that and just just how hard stuff can be and just you know I, I thought about how hard just winning a cadet world title is and that's a 17 and under age group and not even the, the, the free for all age group where anyone can compete it's right, just right. thinking about not knowing who Spencer Lee was and just wow like, that was Spencer Lee and I had no idea like he was just a <laughs> cadet world champion junior just world hanging champion. out in, in the moral room yeah, just 